I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Agenda for consent items are members of the November 20th, 2017 regular board meeting, minutes of the December 16th, 2017 study session, and minutes of the December 6th, 2017 special board meeting. Unless there's an objection, does anyone mind if we combine those with pro vote? Are there any questions about the minutes of any of those three meetings? Any corrections? Any issues? In that case, is there a motion to approve the consent items 1, 2, and 3 the minutes of November 20th, December 6th study session, and December 6th special board meeting? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving the consent items 1, 2, and 3, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 to 0. Financial reports. Um, some of those we'll want to break down. Yeah, I was going to do one, two, and three together, if that's okay. I'm going to ask the board members if they have an objection to us doing one, two, and three together. And if they do, we will do them separately. And if they don't, we'll do them together. But I'd like to do the last the resolution separately, please. Is there an objection to doing on the funds report, I'm sorry, on the financial report, approval of claims, <coughs> payroll, and funds report? Doing those all together? Objections. In that case, are there any questions, uh, additions, deletions? And I'll let you go through them about, please. Of course. Um, so this evening we have uh, claims docket numbers 12,463 through 12,642, totaling $1,083,311.32. We have three payrolls, the 11-24-2017 payroll totaling $501,142. <coughs> And 89 cents. We have the December 8th payroll of $435,864.80. And mainly for informational purposes only um, is the December 15th, 2017 uh, tag distribution uh, was a payroll total of $47,145.46. Um, since we have all the payrolls listed on here, just thought it would be a little more transparent to list that one as well. Um, on the funds report, uh, general fund started at $569,141.58. We had $1,043,631.28 worth of receipts. The expenses for the month were $1,096,124.59, leaving us an ending balance of $516,648.88. I'm sorry, debt service fund started with $2,262,279.72. We had $9,588.40 worth of receipts. The expenses were, for the month were $530.56, leaving us an ending balance of $2,271,337.56. Capital projects fund started with $486,259.24. We had $5,013.53 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $56,227.72, <coughs> leaving us an ending balance of $435,045.05. Val, on that one, I had a question. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably just a typographical error, but in the year-to-date expenditures then for... Um, oh, I see it. Yep, you're right. And I, I guess it would be 1130 instead of 1131, but yeah, it just says 56,000 <laughs> a year. That would be awesome. That is a typo. Thank that you that for too. pointing that out. So yep, it would be the 1,339 plus the 56,000. So my errors, and I'll get that corrected for next time. So. <coughs> and then on the year-over-year -year analysis, which I really appreciate having that, that's mm -hmm. helpful for us. Um, I wondered if there was a correction needed there, or if it just is ironically exactly the same that we are down 
started with $1,031,242.31. We had $2,186,083 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $82,191.39, leaving us an ending cash balance of $951,237.75. Last but not least is bus replacement fund. We started with $49,530.67. Receipts for the month were six hundred and seventy-two dollars and eighty-seven cents. No expenses for the month, leaving us an ending balance of fifty thousand two hundred and three dollars and fifty-four cents. Any questions on the test report? Thanks for pointing us out. My apologies. Since there is an issue, Ted, with the capital projects fund, she needs to make some corrections to that. Would it affect it if we don't approve it? Do we approve it with her? Corrections. You're, you're better tabling that report. And so we table the capital projects funds until the corrections are made and brought to us next meeting. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions for the In order to clarify that then with the approval of plans, let's do the funds report separate. Let's just do them all separate so that way we can uh, differentiate those out if that's okay with everybody. Any objections to doing it as we did standard so we make sure we get it right. Okay. Is there a motion to approve on the financial report number one approval of claims 12463 to 12642 totaling $1,083,311.32? So moved. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Tom. <coughs> All in favor of approving the approval of claims number one on the financial report, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carries six to zero. Payrolls. Any questions for on payrolls? In that case, is there a motion to approve payrolls as given number two in the financial report? So moved. Motion made by Jenny. Second. Second. Oh. Rick beat you to it, Sandy. Oh, oh. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving the payrolls and item number two in the financial report, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. As far as the funds report, with the exception of the capital projects fund, I believe that's the only thing we need clarification on, correct? With the exception of the capital projects fund, is there a motion to approve the funds report excluding the capital projects fund? So moved. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the funds report with the exception of the capital projects fund, please signify by <coughs> Motion carries six to zero. Resolution to transfer unencumbered funds, and we'll have that by the next meeting, right? By the correction. Excuse me. Resolution to transfer unencumbered funds to the rainy day fund. So, before you tonight, and up on the screen as well, is a resolution to transfer uh, unencumbered funds that we have from the transportation fund to the rainy day fund. So, in our budget, um, we were uh, given an appropriations. The transportation fund, five hundred and oops, sorry, nine hundred thousand, and we have not used all of those appropriations, so we have some remaining appropriations left over. And so the two resolutions before you tonight for approval um, is the opportunity to take those um, unencumbered balances and um, expend them from the transportation and transfer them to one is for this one is for the. Uh, rainy day fund and then we also have an opportunity to uh, replenish the repair and replacement fund to them that we use to purchase um, the new CNC machines from as well. So taking advantage of um, unencumbered funds where we have the cash flow balance available um, and taking that opportunity to shift it to rainy day and repair and replacement fund. Best I like it. <laughs> and I have one pass out to y'all. <laughs> 
reason while um, Mal is passing those things out, I would just like to mention with the rainy day fund, one of the things is that it's been a period of years since we've been able to put into the rainy day, so I want to commend everybody for having their eyes and ears on this. But one thing that Val and I are aware of and we want to be very open about is the one unknown that we always face every year are, um, are being self-insured. And so we are trying in good faith to put this money away kind of in a savings account. Um, it's, if, if we needed to access it, obviously we would have to come back to the board to ask for permission for that. So I think it kind of puts that checks and balances into place and allows us to put that money into savings in the hope that it stays there. But also want to point out that we feel that the budget's right. We feel that we've got everything accounted for. The one unknown is always that self-insurance. So if there's anything that we can see ourselves coming back for middle of the year, as soon as January rolls over, um, your health deduction, you have to turn <coughs> over on that. So I think that that'll be a period of time of growth in our self-insurance fund. But just, just to be fully transparent with the board, we believe that we can do this. We believe that those funds will remain in there. The one unknown is always self-insurance, and that would be potentially the only thing that we might need to come back to you on. All other things, obviously, unforeseen. With the uh, resolution for the um, re repair and replace fund, just a reminder that we do have our old CNC machines out on the website right now. They are being auctioned that closes on Monday and it's a good faith effort to try to get as much back as we can on those. And when I left the office today, the, the bid was like at $1,505. <laughs> it was some odd amount, but um, that seems to be going well and that's also money that we're trying to generate and do a good faith effort around that as well. Would that go back into the rainy day fund? Or the, excuse me, the repair and replacement fund? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know if you have other questions that we can answer. Rachel, you had a chance to review this when we talked about the study session. I looked at it at the, yeah, the study session. Um, the only problem is both resolutions. Uh, declare this to be the County Council of Rochester Community School Corporation that should be at the board of Rochester Community School Corporation. So uh, the other the balance of them is by you're not the county yeah you're not the county council. So. We should discuss winning power commission. <laughs> I think that's already been voted on. <laughs> So we want to table this as well? I never. No, you need to get, you just uh, make an amendment to the yeah. resolution. Uh, get a motion to second, then ask the, or then if someone will amend that to change the word the board, that'll take care of it. But I can have it ready um, and, and have the corrected printed for signature okay. before we leave. Then we'll get it out over here. It's important for auditors and to close out. We talked about the second resolution yet, or we want to do that now. I'm not going to lump them together, we'll do them separately. But if you want to, with the yeah, I, I believe that I shared with the repair and okay. replace that's with those okay. CNC machines and trying to some of those, some of that was paid for through a grant that we received. The other part of it is being able to replace some of the funds with um, this transfer of money, and then the other would be in good faith, whatever we can get out of the old machines, which I don't know right now, it's at 15, right around 1500, but that would also go back. Any questions for Jan or Val on any of those? Any questions? Any questions? In that case, uh, number four underneath the financial report, the resolution to transfer unencumbered funds to the rainy day fund. So we want to do the motion to second, and then with the, we want to make the change from the county council to the board. So the resolution to transfer and cover funds to the rainy day fund with the change from city county council to the board. Is there a motion to approve number four under financial report? So moved. Motion made by Tom. Second. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the resolution to transfer and cover funds to the rainy day fund with the change to board instead of county council. Signify by Mary's your right hand. Motion carries six to zero.
And then subject number five, or I'm sorry, number five under financial report, resolution <laughs> audience for unencumbered funds to repair and replacement fund with the change of county council to board on the resolution. Is there a motion to approve that? So uh, give that one to Jenny. Second. Second by Sandy. Those in favor of approving the resolution to transfer any kind of funds to the repair and replacement fund with the change from county council to board, please see me find my raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. I'd like to go back to the funds report real quick. Unless there is dissent or disagreement, we consider the capital projects fund table. Is there any, I just want to make sure for the record that we, there's no dissent that we consider that table. That's table. Okay. I just want to do it the right way. Uh, <laughs> we can. We don't need to vote unless somebody dissents, I believe. And then number six under the financial report resolution to close the 2017 year end. So this one is uh, resolution 20, 2017-8, uh, resolution to close 2017 year end. I feel a lot better about this template because it's the same as last year. So <laughs> moving forward on that one, um, it's a formality that gives me the permission to uh, transfer um, available appropriations to some of the budget lines that may be over encumbered but within the same program. Um, it's a formality that gives me permission to do that process and then in January uh, it also talks about how I will come back to the board in January and report on those transfers and how much it went from here to there in, in each program of each fund. So just another formality as well. Any questions? <clears throat> Any questions about for the resolution to <coughs> close the 2017 year end? In that case, is there a motion for to approve the resolution to close the 2017 year end? So, motion by Steve. Second. Second by Tom. Those in favor of approving? Resolution to close the 2017 year end. So you can find my raising right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Student and stakeholder focus. Donations. And of course, this always shuts off when I stand up. So. <coughs> Table to approve donations as presented. The Good News Club supplies for real teachers in office. The Good News Club supplies for Columbia office. An anonymous donor of 22 water bottles for RMS 7th and 8th grade basketball team. Sarah Dalton, five pairs of boots for student needs at the middle school. United Ministries, eight backpacks to RMS Pack a Backpack Food Program. Treasures for the Heart Ministries, $150 to the food pantry. Treasures for the Heart Ministries, three bags of clothing for a high school student. Anonymous $1,500 to RMS for Dan Bailey to use for anything he deems necessary in teaching or coaching at Rochester. Junior Achievement, hats, gloves, last kids tissues for Columbia School. Kroger $110.65 to Rochester Community School Corporation. <coughs> Zimmerman Brothers Funeral Home $100 for the Spanish Club trip. Mr. and Mrs. Help me with the pronunciation there. Guyan and Sheila Joshi, three copies of Finders Keepers up for the elementary and middle school libraries. First Christian Church undergarments as needed to fulfill needs across the district. The American Legion Post 36 $200 Walmart gift card for a family in need this Christmas for Columbia School. And I know we wanted to bring these back up again because we didn't have media coverage here at the last meeting. This is very important, as to all the donations. Sponsors the Rochester Middle School PBIS Color Run, Rapid View, r, r Visual, Artisty Printing, Steve Moore Agency, Shepherd Chevrolet, RTC Fiber Communication, First Federal Savings Bank, Skyline Builders, Fraunfelter Dental Clinic, Blue Pit Print Construction, Edward Jones Lance Nelson, and then added today, RHS Athletics, one half of the 50-50 drawing for the food pantry, the Hughes Family Clothing and Coats for RMS and Student Needs. The Blue Apple Circle Women's Church Group Hats and Gloves for Columbia School. 
and the Ruth Missionary Circle Bethlehem Baptist Church $100 to purchase item, items for the Columbia Nurses Office. Before we make a motion to approve these, as always, it never goes unappreciated. Thank you all so very much in the community. I know the Sentinel RTC will put it in there, but thank you so very much for the donations, especially this time of year when it's getting colder and the weather's getting worse. Appreciate all that you give to our schools, and I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for what you do. And if I may add, there are so many unsung heroes that we can't possibly list them all. There are things going on that the principals know about or that we know about across the district. There was just a need that was announced um, at Rochester High School this morning, and it was sent out to the district, and instantaneously people rallied around that student, that family, and we see that all the time across the district, and I think um, we could spend literally half of a board meeting just going through all of those to all of those <coughs> unsung heroes as well. A sincere thank you. People just, if there's a need, it's just instantly pats nodding their head. It's just instantly taken care of across the district, whether it's a personal donation or something that you have at home or you know somebody who knows somebody, but all of those things are always taken care of. So thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, there are a couple here to the food pantry. Are we managing the funds for that as well? Cause, okay. Well, the donation, yes. Um, and the $150 will be uh, paid for with corporation funds since that check was written to the corporation. We have a donation fund that is uh, of onboard approval will go into. And then, um, and then we'll expend that as well. But as a so whole. So we'll pay Kids Bridge or we'll, like, how? Because I thought the funding for it was going to go not, through. It, well, part of it does go through Kids Bridge, but not nearly enough to keep the entire pantry going. So there are other students in needs. We just had a fire at one of the buildings, and um, one of the, I think it was Jason, came to us and asked. And so that was, it goes above and beyond just the backpack program. It's helping to take care of those other needs as well. So this is to help offset. I guess I was confused on how the accounting was going for that then. So, we have a separate line item for the food pantry. It's in a donation fund. So um, that donation fund is a, it's it's held to the constraints of how much cash is in the fund of this donation. It's not within like the regular general fund bus replacement that we have to advertise our um, expenditures for a year in advance. But you're saying that the needs for the food pantry go above what we what is received through Kidsbridge. So where is that money coming out of except for these donations that are received here? Then that's handled by, everything else is handled by Kidsbridge. But since this donation was to Rochester Schools, to the pantry directly, then we, the check was made out to Rochester Schools for the pantry directly, so we received that in, and we have a, literally a fund called donation for situations like these. Okay, I'm hearing two different things though. You're okay. telling me what I kind of assumed mm -hmm. that would be that but it comes through Kidsbridge. But for the whole scope of the, pro the program, uh -huh. the whole scope of the program, that is run through Kidsbridge. Okay, so we aren't, as a Rochester Schools, paying anything out for the food pantry. Correct. No, no. Not more but you just yeah. said, I was confused because I thought you said that it goes beyond what Kidsbridge could pay for, so that's why we have these extra funds that are coming into we us. We operate the pantry on a, because of the transition, um, from just a, pan a, a backpack program, it's more of a food pantry and backpack. So these funds help keep the food pantry of it going, and then we also get donations in the backpack program. So they run in tandem. And it opens up our availability of what we can do. With the Maybe I'm not asking it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm trying to. So we have, as a school corporation, have not paid out anything beyond what we've received in donations Correct. for the food pantry. Correct. Another example is the high school, Adam's not here, the high school just had a food drive mm -hmm. and brought in 1,500 cans of food to put into that. Not all, not all of that is um, set aside specifically for the backpack program. Some of those are for families in need when principals call us and have that come up. Okay. So are we going to have as a line item in our budget the food pantry? Because what if we don't have enough donations that come in to cover that? Or it will only be donation driven? It would only be like donation driven. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the finders keepers, there's even a question mark next to it. Do we know what that is that's been donated to the library? The question mark is part of the title. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question about what that is. It's a book that Jason got his copy today when you were over. It's um, it's a book that is written um, to for the middle or for the elementary and middle school programs, and it's just about different cultures, people being together, united, those types of things. And at the risk of sounding like a Scrooge, <laughs> my last question is. Um, because when people donate to us, if I'm not mistaken, they can use that as usually a tax deductible expense because we are a nonprofit organization. Do we have a policy on, obviously when people donate, they can and have been, and, and I would guess should be specific in how they want those funds used, but it looks like we're crossing into another level here when we're having somebody who can write a check for $1,500 to a specific teacher. Um, do we have a policy on that? Is that something we are looking into? Is this something we want to encourage? Because obviously if a person just gave that check to that teacher, and this is not anything against that teacher at all, then they could not deduct that off their taxes. But if they write it to us and then it goes through here, then they can. That's a very good point, Jenny, and frankly I was going to raise it if you didn't. Uh, uh, that check has to come into the school corporation if Mr. Bailey as the teacher wants to come in and say, let's use it for this or let's use it for that, it's not his decision, it remains the board's decision and the administration's decision. So uh, I don't know what the intent of the gift was, but uh, you may want to look at that before uh, before you accept it because if, if it was given as if he gets to make those decisions, then you can't accept it. If it was given to the school corporation saying, that's a teacher I want to make the decision subject to the governance authority of the school, then that's, of course, something else. And anything he would use the money for has to be school, athletic, or otherwise related. It can't be a bonus to another teacher or an aide who's been doing well. Uh, none of those things are permissible. Oscar, from from the donation. I mean, this is yeah, the donation we've this, gotten for a couple of years. This will be the second year he's gotten it. Um, they want to remain anonymous, so I'm going to say who it's from. And so he's got in last year, he bought murals that now we're finding out that this year we're going to have to use the donation to probably cover the cost of putting those murals up. When I say murals, he's a social studies teacher. He bought a map that would cover this wall for his classroom that, I'll be honest, I could not buy for him with our school budget, so it's nice that he got that. Sure. And then it's for his athletic purposes, too. He bought and they're handy things you put on that keeps your left thumb from being behind a basketball when you shoot it. And he lets the girls program use it, the boys program use it, and things like that. So it's been a positive thing. And Dan runs everything through Candy and myself, so. Well, as long, as, long as the cash runs through Candy and yeah. you, then that's fine. And then the administration is making the decision. He comes with recommendations, much like donor advice, funds you find uh, in a lot of Community Foundation events. So uh, it sounds like you're handling it properly, but do Val or uh, uh, Mrs. Vance need to keep an eye on it. So we don't need to do anything different with the wording on the motion to approve these. We just base it on the fact that Mrs. Vance, or can we say Mrs. Vance, or with the approval, approval of Mrs. Vance of the building, or Mr. Haas? Yeah, yeah, you may want to say. Uh, at the end of that, subject to administration approval. Okay, and that leaves it open. She can delegate that to Mr. Haas if she chooses right. or not. Because it does say it's fifteen hundred dollars to RMS, and that uh, Mr. Bailey just makes the just makes the decision, but he can't make the decision. It has to be administration. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the donations that presented? And an addendum to that, the donation of RMS for Dan Bailey of fifteen hundred dollars to use for anything he deems necessary with administrative with administration's approval. Is there a motion for that motion? Motion is made by Rick. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the donations as given, signify by raising your hand. Motion carries six to zero. Again, thank you to all the donors, each and every one. Sincerely is appreciated. <clears throat> On to information and analysis. They're reading the various policies. We just have two. And so if um, the board so chooses, these would be adopted tonight. If 
we vote that way. 1543 is um, a resetting of dates for non-renewal of administration contracts. And 8470 is prohibiting registered sex or violent offenders from being on school property, which aligns with the laws. Is there a motion to approve the third reading of various policies? Number 1543 and 8470. Motion approved. Uh, motion by Steve. Or second. Second. Second by Tom. Those in favor of approving the third reading of the various policies, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. First reading of various policies. <laughs> so we're on to our next packet, and in this packet, as we've kind of had us our um, procedure to start with ones that we really don't have a lot of decision making to do on. They are either technical changes, sometimes even typographical kinds of changes, but also perhaps at times state law changes that, or federal law that we, we have to abide by. Um, the first is by law 0122. It's a technical change. Um, it, as our consultant says, more clearly states um, the governance of the school board is having home rule. 2510, let me make sure that my notes go with the policies that are listed here. 2510, um, adoption of curricular materials. It's about making sure that we uh, give guidance to our business manager and her department on how to prorate textbook refunds when a student withdraws from school. 5200 is attendance. <coughs> um, these exempt absences there are many reasons that a student may be not physically in the building, but still counted as present. So this is not about when they're sick or anything like that. That's if they are a page, if they are um, at the state fair, and now there's stipulations. But one of the changes is that there's a stipulation on how many days they can be at the state fair, and also if they, um, they have to be in good academic standing to be counted um, present at school, even if they are at the state fair, and there's a limit on the number of days. Also in there is something that we do make use of already in our practice. If, as a corporation, we say that a community organization is sponsoring something that ha aligns with our corporation goals, and, they are, and our students are participating in that, they can be considered present at school even though they're not technically on a school field trip. Obviously, if they're with the FFA somewhere or they are with the Spanish class somewhere, they, that's a field trip that they are counted as president of school. But this would be something like the Fulton County Youth, Le Youth Leadership Academy that it is not run by our school personnel, but it does have our students that go and they are not counted absent on those days. So kind of a long-winded explanation, but that is an attendance um, issue. and. It's something we already have in practice, and it's not something that we can say we don't want to do. State law says we need to do it anyway. Uh, let's see. 5461. Um, this is credit for courses completed before students enter grade 9, and we do have that. We have 8th graders and sometimes even 7th graders that are taking high school classes. <laughs> this is literally changing the word, uh, or making the word instructor in part of, of that policy. So, more clearly defines instructor. Then 5840, this has a lot of corrections, but they are all changing the word gang to organization. So criminal organizations instead of criminal gangs. 8531, free and reduced price meals. This is again a technical change. Instead of referring to students as needy, they are referred to as eligible. Uh, we also need to make sure that our our consultant reminded us too that we are going with the practice that we do have in policy, which is uh, making sure that we have a second audit, second audit of applications. So it's not just one person who looks at our applications for free and reduced lunches. And that leaves 8540 vending machines. So there were there's rules that have changed and how we can when we can have vending machines on and so on and what could be in them at least for now, so that we are updating that policy. Any questions for Jenny on those policies? And we don't have, I mean, those, I didn't check. Are those up on the website yet? Yeah, we probably do them the day after, so tomorrow. Be 
ones. So if you want to read them, <laughs> we'll take the old ones down tomorrow. I'll send those to Neil and bring the new ones up. Thank you. Jenny, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Does the vending machine in the learning center, we go by the rules of the school buildings? Ooh, that's a good question. Yes. yes. We have our high school, I mean, we have high, our students here. Any other questions, Jenny? Kind of loses something in translation when you go to the grand gang food feeding to organization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the first reading of the various policies? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Rick. Those in favor of approving the first reading of various policies, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carries six to zero. Approval of bond council. As we begin looking at uh, the bond monies needed for middle school and other projects across the district, um, it's important to us that uh, we uh, secure bond council, but in that, decided to do as we've done with um, other situations in the district when. Uh, Steve and Brad as part of our financial committee we went out and sought uh, bank uh, requests for proposals what banks could do for us we've seen it on the insurance side so in good faith we wanted to do that with our bond councils we move forward into the next round of bonds and so um, we provided that at the study session and it's uh, I don't know if there's a copy on it but we gave the copy of the study session I've got a couple extra copies up here through that and I also spoke with Ted uh, mid-morning this morning about what Val and I had been speaking about but with that we received uh, three requests for proposals from that we narrowed it down to two um, those two being Rose McKinney and Evans and I Smeller and then uh, the difference the differential between the two was minimal at best if, if not at all in certain categories in the past our bonds have always um, gone with Ice Miller Jane Herndon does a really, really good job. We have never had any trouble. They are uh, always um, on point for us. They've answered questions. They help us through the audit period, all of those types of things. Uh, Ted also said that he thought that they were highly recommended as well, and you've had the opportunity to work with Jane. So our recommend, recommendation as we move forward would be to continue with Ice Miller um, as our bond counsel moving forward into 2018. Any questions of Jim? I think Val brought all of those RFPs with her. There are specific questions you need to go down into it. And we had it. We there were no concerns. There wasn't anything other than due diligence to make sure that we were doing what we needed to do. As, as this is a time of turnover and we're going into the new bonds and everything, just to make sure that, <coughs> that we were doing our due diligence on our end as well. So no concerns. Just making that the data was there to support it. Ted and Joe. Uh, just to clarify, the last two or three bonds we've done with Randy Rapola out of uh, Baker, or out of uh, Barnes and Thornburg, but uh, uh, Jane has done them here previously, and has done them with the county and uh, with uh, uh, the Akron Public Library Building Corporation this last time I worked with her a few years ago. So. Recognition is for Esmo. Is there a motion to approve bond council of Ice Miller? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. I second that. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving Ice Miller as the bond council, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Schedule a 1028 public hearing. So as we move forward, and I'm going to lean on Ted and Rachel a little bit here. The next thing, as I understand it, is we need to schedule that 1028 hearing where we would bring Kurt Fletcher in to explain and answer questions of the public in regards to that and uh, what that would look like for our taxes. We would also have Terry Thornsbury here to answer specific questions in regards to the Riddle Age Back, which is at the very top of our concerns and wanting to get that taken care of. And I'm going to ask Jason here in just a minute to share what, the, what that's done for Columbia because as we spoke today, um, he had some really encouraging words, uh, just just how the process went and knowing that we can we can survive it, Luke will get riddled through it as well, but um, just what an incredible difference that's made 
we've always had a lot of community support. They've asked good questions. They've always uh, been right there for us. And so as we consider that 1028 hearing, I would like to try to work with the board to schedule that in the evening sometime um, in the near future so that the community would have a chance to come to listen to Terry, to listen to Kirk, to ask those questions. Maybe if I can get Jason and a couple of his teachers here to let them know what they've done for Riddle and Luke and his teachers here as proponents and advocates for that. But what Val and I are learning and we're seeing across the state is that um, we feel a sense of urgency to do this because other districts have already released their bids. We know Fort Wayne Community Schools, there's schools, two schools in Northern Indiana that are releasing and we want to be right there in one of the front runners to make sure that we're still getting those bids of people who want work, not necessarily people who don't need the work but put the bids in anyway and that seems to be when the prices are, those bids come in higher than what we anticipate. So if we could schedule this and one of the suggestions that I thought about, or Ted and I, as we were talking today, considered and bounced around as we were together on that January 10th for our study session, if we could just extend that day into the afternoon, early evening hours to have that then. If that's not appropriate, if that's too long of a day, if we could schedule a day where we could get the board together for the evening to hear that, it would be greatly appreciated. You also have the meeting on the 15th, so you could possibly have the 1028 a uh, half hour, 45 minutes before the meeting starts. Either day. So we have something on the 19th to do. Can I just read the thing? I don't believe so. We have the study session on the 10th and the board meeting on the 15th. Okay. Shouldn't the board meeting be on the 22nd? It's on the communication calendars is the 15th. I mean, we can move that. But if we is, isn't it usually because I used to think it was the third Monday and then I was told no, it's the it's the la second to last Monday. But since it's five Mondays, it doesn't really matter to me. But obviously we're just five days apart if we do a study session and a meeting. And I'm fine with doing it on the tenth as well in the afternoon. Any issues with doing it on January tenth? Yes. Uh, Ted, what are the legal advertisements? The Requirements for a 1028 hearing. Do you know off the top of your head? Don't know off the top of my head, no. I you just have to keep in mind that there are those closures to the holidays that will affect publication. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Would it throw off our timeline to wait an extra five days to, to do that? I know you want to get it done as quickly as you can. Which would you prefer? I think if we could do it on the 10th, that would help the process. No issues with anybody doing it on the 10th, as long as we can do it and make sure our legal applications are done in plenty of time. Right? Okay. Is there a motion to schedule the 1028 public hearing for January 10th? So moved. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of scheduling the 1028 public hearing for January 10th? Uh, no. the time, plenty of time later. No. Signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. Uh, approval and sale. I'm sorry, approval of sale slash destruction of surplus items. We have two of them. No, one of them. Student desks in excess, they're supposed to be sold in as in as is condition, correct? Right? As is condition. We want to keep the best that we have in the district for, for, for future use. These are the kind of desk. Um, that we're using the past where the seat is attached to the actual desktop. You can't. Um, kind of don't fit in. <laughs> <laughs> Nor does my son very well. But we're seeing so much across the district that we're going to the more uh, group oriented settings. We've got the desktops and, and the student centered labs, those types of things. So we have literally across the district rooms and rooms of those types of desks that just simply aren't being used. So. We want to make sure that we uh, hang on to the best of those, but again, are trying to clean out some areas. So these would be those that are as is, that need some work, that are necessarily in the best shape, and some of them I'm not sure why we've hung on to for so long. Then we have a Sears and Roebuck and Co Sears Roebuck and Company refrigerator model two five three eight six eight four zero eight two manufactured nineteen ninety eight. I think that's coming out of Riddle Schools. Luke, is that your refrigerator that isn't needed or used anymore? Or has problems and concerns? Is that the one out of the... It doesn't have a handle. I think it's out of the teacher's So it's done. That's, a, that's lived his life. Lived his life. Yeah, it would be 30 years old. And 
than the sale or transfer of I'm still in high school. <laughs> it is old. Sale or transfer of recyclable property requests. And it has continued the Han office chair asset tech number one, two, three, nine, four. And we're proposing that we just uh, scrap what we can from that and destroy the rest. It's not even, I can't see anybody wanting it, and it's not safe for somebody to use. Any questions for Jana on those uh, surplus items? Is there a motion to approve the sale or destruction of the surplus items? So moved. Motion made by Tom. Second. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the sale or destruction of the surplus items, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried six to zero. Faculty and staff focus. And that is the personnel report. We have the intercession hiring recommendations. Are those on here? Yes. Is that all of them? This one, they're all you want this one, I'd probably right there, right? Yep. Okay. For the personnel report, we have for hirings, Kenzie Collins, the RMS language arts teacher. Reassignment, reassignment, Cal Bernadas from Rochester Middle School, Project Lead the Way teacher to Rochester Middle School Social Studies teacher. And retirements, we have Chris Cox, Middle School Social Studies, Grade 7, effective end of the day, November 27, 2017. Family medical leave, we have Jody Cameron, Middle Instructional Assistant, December 11th through January 1st, 2018, back to work on January 2nd, 2018. For winter intercession, we have Felix Amandi for RHS English, Terry Screeton for RHS Mathematics, extracurricular hirings, Taylor Shally for the High School Drum Auditorium Manager, effective immediately. Uh, sports hirings, Jessica Hoffman for the Middle School Girls Basketball Assistant Coach. Dan Bailey is the 6th Grade Boys Basketball Assistant Coach. Seth Wilson is the 6th Grade Boys Basketball Volunteer. Phil Bowers is the 6th Grade Boys Basketball Volunteer. And Aaron Cashin and Aaron Leaf, Elementary Volleyball, to split the stipend for Elementary Volleyball. And added today, for extracurricular hirings. Chad Thomas for RMS Geography B. Kyle Bernadas for RMS Student Council. Cheryl Wilhite for RMS Yearbook. Dave Danhauser for RMS Band. Lisa McMillan for RMS Vocal Choir 6th and 7th. Lisa McMillan for RMS Vocal Choir 8th, first semester at least. Kyle Bernadas for RMS Robotics. There is no one for the Rochester Middle School Art Club and none for the FCCLA. Jill Weaver for the third grade music program director. Lisa McMillan for the fourth and fifth grade music program director. Leslie Strim for the real fifth grade student council. And Tom, do we want to take Charlie out for you on that one? And then we will approve Charlie in a separate vote of the personnel report in order to honor Tom's wanting to abstain from that, unless there are any objections. So is there a motion to approve the, I'm sorry, sir, would you like to add anything? Would you like to? Is there a motion to approve the personnel report with the exception of Charlie Schwenk as a director of Rental Running Club? So the motion is made by Steve, second by Rick. All in favor of approving, I didn't need to put words in your mouth there, Tom. No, it's okay. With, is there a motion to approve the personnel report with the exception of Charlie Schwenk, Schwenk as a director of the Rental Running Club? Or, all in favor of approving the personnel report with the exception of Charlie Schwank as the director of the Riddle Running Club, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. In addition, is there a motion to approve Charlie Schwank as the director of Riddle Running Club? So motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving Charlie Schwank as the director of the Riddle Running Club, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carries five to zero. Are there any abstentions? Mr. Schwenk is abstaining. Motion carries five to zero. Superintendent's business. Um, I want to thank uh, Val and Jason and Oscar and Pat. We have auditors in the district, and I know that uh, um, they require a lot of extra time and effort and energy, and I know that each of them have met with the auditors or when the auditors call. Um, they expect that information to be there and those meetings to happen. So I want to thank you for your help and your support and diligence in meeting with those auditors. 
um, just wanted to share our LED uh, lighting project will begin at RMS this Wednesday beginning at around 8 o'clock in the morning. You'll see some trailers in the parking lot where we'll store those supplies. The goal is to have the uh, middle school transferred over to LED by the end of Christmas break right at the first of the year. So the first building will be taken care of. For those of you who would like to join, Dick Belcher will be in the district Thursday morning. He's going to present uh, a check for us at 9.30 and then um, I offered him, he very much wants to go over to the middle school and see some of that unfold and what some of the newer classrooms look like with the LED lighting as compared to the old. And so if anybody would like to join us, we're starting at uh, central office at 9.30, but he's excited to see that unfold. And Oscar shared in one of his uh, phone calls to me how excited he was in regards to the difference. He could tell the difference in the lighting and what the impact that was going to have in the building. And then Jason, if you wouldn't mind just taking a few minutes to share thoughts on HVAC for Columbia as we move over to Riddle and the good, the bad, the ugly. I'd love to talk about uh, VUVs and damp <laughs> dampers and uh, <laughs> the control valves and all of that, that great stuff. Uh, what you and I can discuss what a VUV yeah. is, the difference between a VUV and a V8. I mean, yeah. Um, but the... Uh, the, the units that we've put in, they're quiet. Uh, they don't, there's, there's no smell to them. You know, the other things were, there was a lot of belt driven parts that were just old. Um, and, you know, sometimes they'd burn up in the middle of class, in the middle of the day. You'd have to evacuate a room and not because they were on fire, but I mean, because, you know, of the smell and, and things like that. And, you know, this, this year we've gone, we can control our temperatures, um, the air quality, I, I don't have any, uh, tests on it, um, but the air quality seems to be night and day difference. Uh, there's not the, the musty smell, the the leaking pipes that, that we had in the building that would you know get condensation on them, and you know they're, they're insulated now, and and just the um, the environment itself is uh, very conducive to uh, you know education and the learning. Um, I think if you ask any of our teachers, they'll tell you the same. We do have a couple of EUVs that are uh, giving us some trouble, and we're working on getting those balanced, and I'm not going to get into all the, the work that we're doing with those. And, and it's just standard stuff. When you put that many in, uh, it's nothing major. They're working, but uh, we're just trying to get them right. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of science involved in that, that uh, you know, having the amount of airflow when you got them coming out of two different areas, they have to be equal, and if they're not, then it can adjust and change the whole dynamics of the, the unit. So um, we're working with uh, the, the contractors. Uh, they're, they're, they've been very helpful in helping us resolve those issues. And just uh, in general, um, you know, when we, when we talk about the heating and the cooling, the, the, the building is comfortable and, uh, and, and very, very good for, for our kids and our staff. So we've been very happy with the, the units and the work that those people have done. And I would like to thank the community for their support, the board for their support, and Jason's done a phenomenal job of communicating with the teachers and the staff that goes deeper than Jason. The teachers are really working to, as we transition in and out of classrooms and move around, so it's truly a joint effort by everybody, but in the end, I think that we've got a really good quality product that it's going to uh, benefit for us for years to come. And, so. and the process itself, I mean, Mrs. Vance just hit on it. it. I mean, it really boils down to the teachers being flexible because we had to boot them out of their rooms and you know they, they had new areas to, to, to clean up, not clean from the construction, but I mean new storage areas, so things had to be shifted. And they were very flexible in that whole process and, and very supportive of it. Um, and and they, they deserve a lot of the credit for, uh, for the smooth transition for that, so. I have really been over there, but Oh, Paradise is there. It's uh, we're 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 gonna change it. We're gonna start calling it the Rock. <laughs> Call it because uh, it's kind of isolated, so it's kind of like Alcatraz. Okay. And, uh, no, we're, I'm just we're, we're actually looking at uh, since we've still got it there. We're looking at, at multiple ways of using that. Uh, right now, we're using it for some uh, testing. We we built like a mobile computer lab out there. But um, in talking with some of my teachers here just in the last week or two, one of the challenges that we have um, when the weather is like it is, is outdoor recess and indoor recess. So we're looking at maybe um, using half of Paradise to create a, 
uh, a room where teachers can take their kids for their indoor recess that has some pre-staged activities, some things that they can do with them so it's not just always in their classroom. Because we have a lot of days um, where kids may not get out, it, it, depending on the weather, you know. So we're, we're utilizing that since we've got it. We just, we're tr we try to do it in different ways and we joke about the Alcatraz thing, different names for it, but it's still paradise. So, yeah, and if could make the deep new out there, but they probably never come back. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that. We don't, we don't want to do that. And if you ever would like to come over and see any of the uh, new VUVs, I'd be happy to, to show What's you how to do It's a, uh, a vertical unit ventilator, not to be confused with a uh, horizontal HUV <laughs> unit <laughs> ventilator. Yeah, it's the, it's the big white thing that they, they put up that's going vertical now instead of horizontal and uh, oh yeah that and I'm going to tell you it, and I don't I mean this is if you want to see something that's that's impressive go look at our um, our boiler room it looks like a, a naval ship I mean it is it is spick and span if I needed a place to stay I'd sleep in there before I'd sleep in my office because that I mean it's got new flooring it looks like uh, something out of like a Chevy plant I mean it's nice they, they, it's, and you can see in there now. It used to be it was like dark and moldy and dirty and oily. It was kind of, it was gross. And I'll and tell you what, it's, it's They're nice. really doing a good job with Brent Carter as well, teaching them how to run and control it, uh, make those adjustments internally so that we should be able to, to save on that moving forward as well. Part of yeah. what we paid for was his training to ensure that it lasts as, as long as we can get out of that. And he has really embraced that and is, very, very good about learning that system and is already starting to make adjustments on his own. So it's been a wonderful. I used to get phone calls probably every other weekend for alarms going off in the uh, in the uh, boiler room, and I, I'm, I got one when I was in a deer stand one time, and I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna have to hop down from the deer stand, go check this alarm out. Um, I haven't had any issues. I mean, it's it's like it's functioning the way it's supposed to. We don't get the alarms middle of the day, middle of the weekend, middle of the night. And you know, it's uh, it's, it's definitely an improvement of what, where we had. I wouldn't see any. Encourage everybody to enjoy their holidays, safe travels. Does the uh, lease on Paradise expire at the end of school year? Right? It does, and we found out going through it that it was going to cost more to get out of the lease than it was to continue to utilize the, the facility in, in the way that it was. Um, kudos to Terry and the guys because they were into to Columbia schools they were able to move faster than they thought and get through it much quicker so um, but Val and I as we drilled down on that road it was just better to hang on to it than to pay the extra to get out of the lease so we're trying to be creative in the ways that it's being used and make it productive while we have it but it will be moved and Luke you have so much to look forward to Pump, you know, just uh, touring those BUVs and HUVs in Columbia. <laughs> Super excited. But we, but we are seeing, in all honesty, and I know everybody's ready to call it an evening, are the same things that were happening at Columbia. We're starting to hear reports on from uh, Riddle, um, just seeing those concerns grow. So it's, it's time, and I think it was a good decision to go in Columbia first because the needs were so much greater there at that point in time. But Riddle is starting to see an extreme what, what Columbia went through about a year and a half, two years ago. And everybody may be tired ready to go, but I'm going to reiterate, 930 at Central Office for Mr. Belcher. Uh, yeah, he was he, a very generous donation. He, he was, and he's excited to come in, and when I invited him in, he is, I, it'll be a good morning to spend with Mr. Belcher, and he can see the building and see those things going on, so I'm Thank eager you. to show that. Thank you. And can we invite other people? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Give the public to come. Absolutely. Because it was a very generous donation. We're very thankful sure. for it. It goes along with his philosophy of being environmentally sound and helping. <coughs> I think about him every time I walk in this building. You can see. Yeah. Is there any public comment or question? Is there any other business before the board that needs to be discussed? In that case, we'll consider the meeting adjourned. Merry Christmas and happy holidays.